All right, the next lecture that you're going to watch is types of diffusion. Don't forget to fill out your key term slides that go along with this lecture. Let's begin. All right, diffusion. Diffusion is the spread of some sort of characteristic. And usually that characteristic is an idea for something. Could be um, something as simple as like a slang word or the way of doing something, if there's a better way to do it. So any kind of the, you know, human characteristic, that is, that is the diff type of diffusion that we're talking about. Diffusion usually starts at a specific place. Um, doesn't have to all the time. We'll talk about contagious diffusion in a little bit, but when, uh, when diffusion does for like relocation diffusion or something like that, then we need to talk about its hearth. Where did it come from? And so that's a good way that you can think of, uh, of a hearth. So you can see the, the picture uh, that's on the screen about African migration. And in this case, obviously forced migration when Africans were brought into the new world. Uh, when those people came, they didn't just come, they brought their culture with them. And some of the ideas that these people brought uh, impact countries still today, such as Brazil, um, countries in the Caribbean, Jamaica, and even in the United States. And, uh, you know, when we talk about the hearth of where Africans were brought from, from the old world to the new world, we're talking about, you know, kind of the Gold Coast, that West Africa, Central Africa area. Okay, in this lecture, we're going to talk about two major types of diffusion, relocation diffusion and expansion diffusion. In relocation, we're going to be talking about mostly how just the people move, and when the people move, they take their ideas with them. And then in expansion diffusion, there's three different types of expansion diffusion. And in expansion diffusion, only the ideas are moving, the people are not really moving to spread the characteristic. So relocation diffusion one and expansion diffusion two. Okay, the first type of diffusion we're going to talk about today is relocation diffusion, and that is the spread of an idea through the physical movement of people. And you might think of this when people relocate due to migration or immigration or something like that. And so if we look at an example in the United States, uh, we're looking at what's called the, the Great Migration of African Americans out of the South uh, during World War I and after, in which African Americans moved to Northern cities, typically to find jobs, uh, to escape at least some measure of racism and prejudice, although obviously they didn't escape all of that. And but they, they found better paying jobs in places like St. Louis, Chicago, all the way up to New York City, into Harlem, um, all the way out to L.A., even Denver, uh, Phoenix and Seattle. And when those people moved, they, they took their they took their culture with them. They took their they spread characteristics and ideas. And so a good example, of this would be like the, the style music of jazz. Uh, jazz starts down in the south. You know, Louisiana, down in Mississippi and Alabama, places like that. And then as these people moved up to places like St. Louis and uh, Chicago, Detroit, and up to New York, then they, they took that style of jazz with them. And eventually um, that started to influence other types of music. Whenever you see somebody eating, you know, food with chopsticks, I mean, that, that is not an idea that started here. And so we've had a pretty big history in the United States and still continue to today of people moving from Asia to North America. And so many of those people that are uh, moving from Asia, they're bringing their, their culture, their ideas with them. And one of those is the idea of eating with chopsticks. All right. This, the next kind of um, diffusion we're going to talk about is going to focus on um, the movement of ideas. And so again, that is called expansion diffusion. And when you make your expansion diffusion card, you can you can use you know any of the three that I talk about. And so we're going to start with hierarchical diffusion. Hierarchical diffusion is the type of diffusion where an idea spreads. Now remember, it's expansion diffusion, so the people aren't physically moving to spread the idea. And what makes hierarchical diffusion distinct from stimulus diffusion and contagious diffusion, the other types of expansion diffusion, is that the idea moves. Uh, from a pretty predictable node and it moves in a very predictable way and typically that way is in a hierarchy from an authority and on down. And so a great example of this 
would be like the Roman Catholic Church. And so we know that almost every idea or rule or decree or whatever you want to call it starts with, well, probably God, but then from God to the Pope. And then in a very predictable pattern, that idea gets spread from the Pope to his cardinals to archbishops and then in a, you know, all the way down the ladder until you get to people that are that are worshiping the religion. And so that is a great example of hierarchical diffusion. You might see this in a company where the CEO comes up with an idea, tells the board of directors, the board of directors then tells the regional managers, the regional managers tell the store managers, store managers tell the, you know, the employees, and there you go. There's hierarchical diffusion as well. Um, something like music or fashion could even be considered hierarchical diffusion. And if you take fashion, for example, most fashion trends are going to start in one of a couple of very predictable places. They're going to start in Milan, Italy, or Paris, France, or London, London, England. And then they're going to move uh, very predictably from there to places like New York, LA, Chicago in the United States, maybe to Tokyo, Japan, um, and then kind of on down the line. And if we just kind of take a look at the United States, from New York, Chicago, and LA, they're going to go to Atlanta, Detroit, Denver, places like that. And eventually, they'll make them down to places like Wyoming. Uh, but I think it's important to note that it doesn't really work the other way. Uh, you, you never have fashion trends starting in rural Wyoming and eventually influencing a place like Milan, uh, you know, Milan, Italy, or something like that. Okay, the second kind of expansion diffusion is contagious diffusion. Now, this for students is usually the easiest one to understand because you've lived this quite a bit in your life. And, um, you know, when in, anything goes viral on the internet, that's that's just a great example of contagious diffusion. And if you want to use something like a meme or something like that, that'd be, that'd be a really good one. Okay, so contagious diffusion is the rapid spread of an idea. And really, those ideas don't begin with a predictable node, nor do they move in a very predictable way. And so we don't know where that idea is going to move next. So a couple of years ago, we were, my family was down in Southlands and we were walking around and we see these adults with their heads down and almost to the point where they, this one guy almost walked into a, a, an electric pole and uh, like a light. And uh, my son went up and asked him, he's like, what are you doing? And the guy said, well, I'm playing Pokemon Go. And my son said, is that some sort of an app? And he said, yeah, you can download it. It's free. And or I guess it was free or my wife paid for it. And he downloaded it onto our phone, uh, my phone, and started playing it. And uh, five minutes later, some little kid came up to him and said, hey, what are you playing? And he told him Pokemon Go, and that kid went and downloaded it. And so that's a great example of, uh, of contagious diffusion. Maybe you've seen this one where people are, you know, saying what color is the dress? And that, that one spread and went crazy, which is kind of weird to think that Guessing the color of a dress was such a big deal, but that's another example of contagious diffusion. All right, and then the last one, stimulus diffusion, occurs when an idea diffuses and other people take an idea and then they, they innovate, they change that idea in a way that the, the underlying idea is still there, but the idea was changed in a way that the innovator of the idea you know, didn't really intend. And so. Uh, a simple example of this, and then we'll get to a more kind of complex example, but a good example of this is recorded movies. And so some of you may recognize this thing that you see in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. It's a VHS tape, and that, that's how, you know, growing up in the 80s, we used to watch movies, is we'd stick this into a VCR, and uh, we'd, we'd watch our movies on there. But it was very efficient with time. You'd have to rewind and fast forward and all this stuff, and so... In, in the 90s and early 2000s, we have, obviously, DVDs. And those DVDs were great because you could just push a button and it would fast forward and it would rewind. But it's still a recorded movie. But it's innovated in a way that the original you know, person that invented the VCR tape or the VHS tape didn't intend. And now, look at what we have for recorded music. We have streaming music. And again, it's the underlying idea. It's recorded movies. But it's done in a way that the original person did not, did not intend. All right, another good example for your key term card would be something like a steam engine. When Thomas Newcomen and James Watt created a steam engine back in the 1700s, they were doing it 
actually to pump water out of a mine. England had a significant uh, supply of coal and they the pumps that they had at the time uh, could get water out of somewhere like about 100 feet down. And every time they try to dig down and get more coal out of a mine, the, the mine would flood. And so they had to have a pump to get the water out. Well, James Watt knew that if, if he could make a pump that worked really well, that went down really deep to get the water out, he would make a lot of money. And so he creates the steam engine to pump water out of a mine. Well, in 2020, we're still using a steam engine, but we're not using it to pump water out of a mine. We're actually using it to make electricity. And the way it you know, kind of basically works is that you take a reservoir of water and you heat it up usually with coal or natural gas or, or some sort of uh, really hot substance. And then you, you get that water boiling and then it creates steam. And there you go. That's a steam engine. And that steam is released. And that, that steam is so powerful, it turns a turbine, which then is connected to a generator, which makes electricity. And so there you go. I, I doubt that to, uh, James Water, Thomas Newcomen ever envisioned their steam engine being used to make electricity. All right. So that is stimulus diffusion. And uh, don't forget to fill out your key term cards after this or replay this video to help you do that. And let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.